Shalom, all honor, praise, and glory be to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Wahako Dashwaka, double honors to the apostles and the elders at the Great Millstone, who were well, peace and blessings to the brothers teaching the truth across the four corners of the earth where we have been scattered to due to the breaking, right, a major breach of, a co of the covenant, a deal made by our forefathers, our ancestors, with the Most High God, who people ignorantly call God, whose name is Yahweh. To the rest of you believers out there, you women and children, and friends of the prophets of the Israelite nation, which consists of the so-called blacks, aka Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, to you I say peace and blessings as well, if you're proving your faith by your works, right? Peace and blessings to the faithful elect, okay? To any newcomers out there, yes, we proclaim ourselves and profess ourselves to be the biblical Israelites, right? The descendants of the Israelites, the children of Israel. Fasting, the purpose and its perks. So fasting, really quick, quick over, overview. It's something that goes, goes back as far as when our ancestors, when we were literally... Uh, uh, being killed could be killed outright, right, for sin. But there was no grace period, I should say, in the sense of how it is now, right? When we were actually sacrificing animals, this goes back even further beyond that. Now, really quick, we're gonna go ahead and go into the purposes of it as well. So what is fasting according to the scriptures? All right. What is fasting according to the scriptures? Second Chronicles 20 and 3. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself, also known as Yahweh Shapat, right? But Anywho, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord Yahweh, right? And proclaimed a fast. So, and throughout all Judah. So when you're a fast, what is a fast? Is when you're seeking the Lord. All right. Let's get the next one. This is Ezra's 8 and 21. Ezra's 8 and 21. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God, you see, our power to seek him, you see, of to seek of him a right way for us, you see, a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our and for our little ones and for all our substance. So when you fast, you're fasting, you're, you're seeking the Lord and you're seeking, you're seeking superior guidance, right? Infinite guidance, if you will. The guidance from the creator himself. The, the, the I mean, it's, it's, it's so pure, the, the pure guidance that's what you're ultimately doing and you're doing it for your little ones because in, in the sense of being an adult they wouldn't do it in, in the all, complete out, outright understand uh, aspect of understanding as you would and you're doing it for all your substance so you're seeking the Lord ultimately for complete guidance Right? Superior guidance. You're seeking the Lord, the Creator, Yahweh. Bashem Yahweh Shah. Right? You're seeking the Creator, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Now, the scriptures tell us, since I say that, the scriptures tell us, I believe in Colossians, 
Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever ye do, and whatsoever ye do, do in word. So like, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed. So if it's something you say, something you phys physically actually go on and do, you know, outside of your words. It says, do all in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, giving thanks to the Heavenly Father, right? Giving thanks to power and the Heavenly Father, the Most High, by Him. You see? So you gotta, when you fast, you're seeking guidance from the Heavenly Father, but you have to do it in the name of Yahweh Shah. You see? Because He tells us that no man can come unto the Father. But by him, he also tells us he's the door. John 14 and 6, Yahweh Shah said, said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, when you fast, you understand ultimately that's what you're doing. Right? You're seeking perfect guidance. Right? You're seeking in, 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 in a superior, infinite the purest form of guidance for the best outcome for the purest outcome from the creator of himself Yahweh but you gotta do it by going through Yahweh Shah so you gotta do it in the name of Yahweh Shah you have to have that understanding when you are going into it now really quick before we keep going so this is titled fasting the purpose the purpose and its perks so we got the purpose now let's get the perks what is a perk become or make more cheerful lively or interesting she's been the a sentence they gave you she for for as far as an example she she been depressed but she seemed to perk up last week so you get the synonyms right here cheer up brighten up become more cheerful become livelier livelier feel happier take heart be heartening liven up look revive improve recover rally look up you see look up You know, so that's that's powerful right there. Pick up. But we're gonna we're gonna go down. Get the more at the bottom. Revive, okay. It says uh revitalize. Re look, raise someone's spirits. Because I was talking to a brother, you know, uh coming into the faith or whatever. He uh pretty much was inquiring of this. He was inquiring of how to uh pretty much build up uh, what's things, certain things requiring of certain things that could possibly build up or benefit like perks of certain aspects like cold showering if you will right but this is is much more potent than that it says look raise someone's spirits you see revitalize and that's ironically what a cold shower would do but I will have you know that's what fasting would do Revitalize, imbue someone with new life and vitality. See that? And we're going to come back to this definition too, Lord willing. Let's get uh, rejuvenate. Give new energy or vigor to. Vitalize. So when you're fasting, you are rejuvenating your spirit, yourself, your complete being. You give new energy to yourself, right? You allow new energy. You create a pathway for new energy to be given to you or vigor, right? For, for you to be revitalized, you see? You create a pathway for the Lord to outright imbue you with new life, you see, and vitality, you see, now it says, uh, also invigorate, 
because it says when you rejuvenate, so it rejuvenates you like water, right? So you see all the things, the aspects that the Father used, certain themes, water, uh, oil, how these things, uh, fire, they, they work hand in hand for uh, completely making something, getting something good, fire, as far as the example of how we're uh, tried in the fire to purify us, to get rid, of, get rid of all the impurities. Water, water invigorates, right? It hydrates you. If you go back and watch the lesson done on hydrating, it's very, very critical and to understand uh, uh, one that obviously he's telling you his word, his way, right? His word is water. And then in that lesson, we go into the physical aspect of how H2O does this thing called hydrating you and how critical or detrimental that is if you don't have it or the perks that it can give you by having it, right? By having a hydration guide from water. So it's the same thing with fasting. Fasting rejuvenates you. You see, it gives you new energy. It gives vigor to you, right? Revitalize you. Now when you get vigor, it go, that's invigorate. It says give strength or energy to. So when you invigorate, when you're when you're invigorated, you 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 receive strength. You receive energy, right? You, your spirit is stronger now, right? Your spirit is stronger now. So this is how you build up and work the spirit out, man. You build up your mind, right? You build up your endurance. And then when you go into the word endure, endure, the root word, endure means to uh, something that can stand the test of time, man. It's long lasting, right? Perpetual, right? But when you go to the root word of enduring, it, it means hard. So it makes you hard. You become hard. You see, when you're enduring. And you have to become hard when you're enduring. You got, you, you got to build tough skin. Like when they say have tough skin, you end up being, but like it's when you uh, deal with uh, people laughing at you and stuff like that all over, over your life. If you're not a weakling, more than likely you're, gonna, you're just going to build up endurance. You're going to become hard to it. You know what I'm saying? In spirit. So it in spirits. Because when you go back, it says in spirit. That's one of the synonyms for perk. All these are synonyms for perk. It says give strength or energy to. Slakia. Encourage and, and enliven someone. So when you fast, you are asking to be encouraged, to receive new strength, to be rejuvenated, to receive new life. The Lord can give you all will give can give you all of these things, right? If you do, if you fast the right way, which we're gonna go ahead and get through, get through, because this is not nothing too drawn out. Vitalize, give strength to. So that's pretty much it. Now, once again, you gotta go through your Hawasha, you see? And he decides. And he decides, right? Because <clears throat> all things have been given into his hands, except knowing the time when he come back, coming back, man, and the father himself, you know, I'm the only things. All things is subject to Yahweh Shah, except the father himself. All right. Now, so now knowing what perk means, we can go into this and just go ahead and close out, Lord willing. Fat properly fasting the purpose and its perks as was 8 and 21 then I proclaimed a fast there you see it says then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God our power right at this point now today 2020 Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah to seek of him you see a right way so that's what a fast is you're seeking of the father man of a right way you see for us and for our little ones and for all our substance you see and he tells us 
all our ancestors knew in order to get right. Jake don't understand that now, but all our ancestors had this, this, this understanding at least given to them. See, Psalms 119 and 128. Therefore, I esteem all thy precept, all thy thy precepts concerning which are commandments, right, or thoughts uh, that stem back to original place, right, original. Uh, piece of the Father's word, right? Considering all things to be right. You see? Therefore, I esteem all thy, who's the thy, the most high, right? Concerning all things to be right. You see? And I hate every false way. So, you don't go to get a life coach. You know what I'm saying? You go uh, uh, when you need substance, when you need your substance taken care of, when you need your little ones made right, when you need to find the right way. That's what the purpose of fasting is for you see and it, it's a little bit more to it so substance see property goods so this goes into the perks part right possessions property goods we'll come back to this livestock riches now we're gonna keep going don't get lost in that part you know because you gotta understand the seriousness of this you know Cause it's really power. It's really power in this. This is the bread and butter. Your foundation should be built off fasting. This is Daniel nine and three, Salakia. It says, "I'm gonna start at two. In the first year of his reign, I Daniel understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord Yahweh came to Jeremiah." The prophet, Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem, right? And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek, right, to the Heavenly Father, to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting. You see? So it's ultimately when, you, when, you, when you're fasting, you're just seeking the Lord, man. And supplications is when you humbly beg. So the 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 the, quick, the bit the best way to show yourself to be to to, to be doing that because that's that's how you want the father to answer you. It, it says and sackcloth and ashes and all. The best way the reason why you do that too, since you know the spirit is there right now. Psalms thirty four and sixteen. Right, the reason why. The face of the Lord. Matter of fact, eighteen. It says, the Lord Yahweh is not unto them, you see, that are of a broken heart, you see, and save such as be of a contrite spirit. So that's, and it tells us this, that's what you're doing. I believe that's James 4 and 10. Humble yourselves, you see, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. You see that? Look. I'm going to start it up. Uh, draw nigh to God. And he, and then it's another part. Submit yourselves, therefore, to your Havabah Shem Because remember, you got to do, you got to, you know, you're trying to seek that guidance, right? For the best outcome for you, you know? So you fa you, you'll fast. It says, re re resist the devil, right? You don't go to get a life coach or uh shriek or something like that resist the devil and he will flee from you draw nigh to you how about me how shy and he will draw nigh to you cleanse and how do you do it right that's drawing nigh to him is when you're seeking him you see that so you in order for you to draw nigh to the lord you have to fast and then he'll 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 hear you man and we're gonna get that cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double-minded Right? He wants you to focus on him. Be afflicted and mourn, because that's what happens. Right? And tell you that right here. Go back. Uh, Ezra 8 and 21. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves, you see, before our God. Because that's, see, that's humbling. He doesn't have to do it. You just did it. To seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. 
See, Daniel 9 and 3, and I, and I set my face to, unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and, so, and sackcloth and ashes. You see, that's how you get to them. See, our, our people, that's the understanding. You see? Because you're begging, you're asking for guidance. But it say right here, James 4 and 3, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. So certain things he won't hear out. But anyway, but he give more grace. See, that's that, that best, that good outcome. But he give it uh, four and six. But he give it more grace whereof, wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. But give his grace unto the humble. So the best way to humble yourself is is to to to, to fast, man. You see, so that's why I say, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into uh, to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself. See, when you do that, you're humbled because it tell you right here. It tells us right here. In Ecclesiastes 7 and 1, 7 and 2, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, because that's where the proud is at, you know? Now, you ain't going to always be in the house of mourning, but you understand this is the perk, this is the power, this is the, this is the perk of understanding this. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to get, you can, you, you really, when you, because uh, when you go back to that word, perk, when you go back to that word, perk, you see, it's a, an advantage, you see, and it is an advantage or something extra, such as money, goods that you are given because of your job, you see, a company and cell phone are some of the perks that come with the job, so just for an example, but Perks mean advantage, man. And it's definitely an advantage in this. You see? Because they don't know this. It says, you know, regular people don't know this. Jake don't know this. Most Jake, it says, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men. And the living will lay it to his heart. You see, if you're truly alive, you're not walking around dead, you know, valley of dry bones. Dead bodies lying in the street, as the streets, as the scriptures say. You see, sorrow is better than laughter. Laughter. This is what's in the Bible. You know who wrote this? The Solomon, man, the wisest man to ever live, who actually was Yahusha. It says, sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness, well, Yahusha was him. You know, sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. You see, didn't it say you're giving new life, you're strengthened, you're inspirited, you're invigorated? That's your mind, because your spirit is in your mind, man. When you have a weak spirit, you're weak. When you have a weak mind, you're weak spirited. You know? So when we go back, James 4 and uh, uh, it's 9. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. You see? So that's why I say that he is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalms 34 and 16. You see that? Now, moving on so we can close this out. Joel 2 and 12, therefore also saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. You see that? Now, real quick, that's what is fasting. You see? So it's when you turn into the Lord. When you turn unto the Lord to seek him for superior almighty guidance man for the most purest 
superior outcome for yourself. You see? It's like when you get an agent, your agent sets things up for you. They get you right. You know, you get a trainer. You know, that's what fasting and all that is found in fasting, man. That's really what you do. You're training, right, by your trainer. He suggested you fast. You know, who's our trainer? Yeah, how about from how a shot, right? He suggested uh, uh, we do this. Now, what is fasting? When you go into the word fasting, it's tazawam. Right, Tazawam, it says to abstain from food. So that's what fasting is, is when you abstain from food, right? You humble yourself and make it bigger. You make it you, you make it less about you and more about the father. Because you're in the spirit, which is why I say right here in Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, then shall the dust, who's the dust? This that's more so of you while you're here on earth, right? Especially on this side, right? And what I mean by this side, the kingdom of heaven isn't here yet. So nothing is truly in this in this proper form, right? You're Israelite truly not in your proper form just yet. But it says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit, right? That's truly who you are, right? But the spirit shall return unto the heavenly father, the most high who gave it, you see? So when you're separating from what what is the dust the dust is his flesh right quick quick uh quick point you know the points i just got to get them get them as they come man galatians 6 and 8 salakia it says for he that sowed to the flesh shall reap of the Shall of the flesh reap corruption. You see, so when you sow into your flesh, that's when you're feeding yourself. You can get fat. You can gain muscle. You know, you so-called can gain physical energy, right? But he that sow up to the spirit. So when you're fasting, you can't. You, you're feeding your spirit when you're not feeding your flesh. When you're intentionally not feeding your flesh, to be, to deal with really who you really truly are. Right, what the father truly deals with, and that's the spirit, man. That's why the spirit returns to him, and he don't even want the flesh. It just stay here. You see, it say, but he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So that's why you will go into a fast to to get in the spirit, to get to talk the lingo. Now you talking to the Most High. You talking His language now, spiritual. You see. Since I say that, you know what? I'm not even going to make this this deep like that. But this is the, uh, 2 Peter 3 and 11. We probably could come back and do this. Th th this has the lesson, but I'll get this and that'll be it. It says on this part, it says, Seeing then that all these things, 2 Peter 3 and 10, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, right? Like the flesh. What manner of person ought ye to be? Because we know we get new bodies anyway. So that's even talking about our, our current flesh. Uh, what manner of persons ought ye to be? Like manner. What does manner go into? It says, of what sort or quality? Okay. We'll keep it simple. But it says, in all holy conversation. And godliness. What is holy conversation? You see, uh, a conversation is the manner of life. It's talking about your manner of life, your conduct, your behavior, right? And your conduct can be found in the things you talk about. Your manner of life can be found in, can be shown as, shown as, as the things you talk about. Your behavior is seen in the things you, with your talk, you see? But it's actually, you know, just to hit the point, and then holy is set apart. The most, see, what's set apart? Your spirit. That's set apart from the flesh to, to deal, because the Lord, he's the father of all spirits. So when you get in the spirit, you're dealing with the father, man. Hebrews 12 and 9, furthermore, 
we have had fathers of our flesh. You see? Fathers of our flesh. You see that? Which corrected us. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjected ejection unto the father of spirits? Because that's truly what it's about. That's truly the real... That's the real talk, if you're real, right? That's truly what it comes down to, you see? That's truly what it's about. Shall we not much rather be in subjection? What is subjection? To arrange under, to su subordinate, right? You don't want to be insubordinate. You want to be subordinate, meaning you follow, you obey. To subject oneself, obey. To submit one's control, to yield one. To yield, to yield to one's admonition or advice. The Lord advises us to deal with the spirit. Because that's what he deals with. If you're in the flesh 24-7, he's not dealing with you, man. You see? Be in subjection unto the Father and live. You know? So that's that. And it's just a different aspect of it. Romans 8 and we're going to start at 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Right? You mortify. Mortify means to kill off, man. See? To put to death. Destroy. Render. You know? You've, you're starving yourself. So you're, you're, you're mortifying. When, you, when, you, when, you're, when you're fasting on a higher level, you're mortifying your 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 body. It says, but if ye through the spirit, right? Because you want to deal with the spirit, you want to be dealt with, you want to have that guidance given to you. You're trying to seek the Lord to have that guidance given to you for your ultimate outcome, for the superior outcome, for the best outcome that you can get. Right? That's like when you hit the gym all week. So you could be uh in the best physical condition that you can be in versus if you just sat around and ate a bag of potato chips all week, right? What's, what's going to be the better outcome? What's going to uh, result in a better outcome? You hitting the gym or you eating a bag of chips all week? You hitting the gym all week. So that's the same with this. You fasting is going to result in a better outcome for you, for your overall situation, which you've seen in, the, in those scriptures, you know? That was Ezra's 8 and 21. Now, it says, But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, see, the Lord is going to deal with his sons. But otherwise, if you're in your, your flesh, you're basically a bastard. Yep, it's, this, this is what I really wanted. It says, uh, verse, uh, Romans 8 and 6, for to be carnally minded is death. Now, we're not telling you not to just man, to hate the idea of eating. No, I'm not saying that. You just use this fasting as a tool when you need to get yourself right. Your flesh done got too stronger, got stronger than your spirit. Your spirit is weak. Your mind is weak. Right? And we're going to get more scriptures in a second. It says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see? So when you fast, that's referred to proof. You're in the spirit. And we just said, by the spirit, if we just went over, if you are fasting, you're fasting to seek the Lord because you want guidance for the best outcome for yourself. You're trying to find the right way. Right? You're trying to find a good outcome for whatever it is you're requesting. Because really when you're fasting, you're, you're making a request on what it is you need, right? It says, because the carnal mind is enmity. What is enmity? Hostility, hatred, opposition. So it's the, it opposes God. You see, the car, but the carnal mind is, uh, is enmity against God, against Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, neither indeed can be, right? Balance. 
So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. So that's why you would you would have moments of fa fasting. So now you know what fasting is, right? The purpose of it. Now let's get some just some quick quick scriptures real quick. This is uh first Samuel. Why would you fast? Like why why would you fast? Truly understand this. I, sh I could come back, close this out, and just do another one, like probably going into like why, like on a further level, but this to just fully get it, I guess. First Samuel 7 and 6, and they gathered to, to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord Yahweh and fasted on that day, you see? So they abstained from no food. And when you, when you fast, it's dry, right? You don't put nothing to your mouth, Toothpaste, water, nothing. We're going to get that after this, Lord willing. And fasted on that day and said, We have sinned against the Lord, Yahweh. And you see, and Samuel judged the children. You see, that's, 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 that's why they fasted. So that's the reason why you fast when you sin against the Lord. You was in the flesh and you end up going off. So now you're, you're, you're begging the Lord. You're seeking that the Lord uh, gets you back on point before he kills you, man. You see what I'm saying? So when you come into the truth, you 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 should do a lot of fasting because you was just going completely off. You know, you and you you're sorry for that. You're seeking that he gives you more grace and time to get yourself together and quit doing these things. Learn how to quit doing these things. Learn what you can't do. You know, you can fast because when you fast, uh, you're that's it, you're, you're asking the Father to make you right. You see, to, in, to invigorate you, rejuvenate you, to give you that new life. You see, that's what fasting would do. It's going to put you on high. And I'm going to get one more and then we're going to move on from the why. Maybe I'll come back and do another another one on this. Uh, let's see. Let's try 1 Samuel 31 and 13. It should be a bread and butter, man. It says, and they took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jab Jabesh and fasted seven days. Now, <clears throat> that's when, uh, pretty much when, uh, Saul w was murdered. So you, you, you can fast when somebody dies and it's, it's really bad. Right, it's, it's 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 bad. Like all hell, like you your your ass is on the line. So you will fast to beg for the Lord to to make your situation come out right. Cause these are Israelites, right? That seen what just happened to Saul. Saul was beheaded, man. They put they was the the, the damn um, the heathens had Saul head. They went crazy. Look, they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent it into the land of the Philistines round about. And they posted his, his body on the plat. You know, Saul's the first king of Israel. You know, so when you get whiffed for something, you like, you see the Lord out here judging Jake. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's the times we coming into now. So that's why this is a, you learning the purpose and the perks of it, man. Because it's going to give you advantage because everybody don't, you see they don't even understand how to talk the lingo, you know, of the most high, how to get them to hear them. So we're going to move on. We'll come back to why I probably do a further lesson on why, you know, because I got a lot of scriptures. Um, let's go into like how long. This is Judges 20 and 26. How long? So that's those could be reasons why you fast. Because the Lord judging people, you you went off, you going off, you just did something you shouldn't have did. And you want the Lord to hear you out and give you a, a good outcome. Because he could he could jack you up after doing that, you know. So you will fast if it's something just, it's something crazy. You know what I'm saying? Something crazy you did. Or another reason you'll fast is when he out here jack, jacking Jake up. Judgment coming, you know, it hit close to home. You know what I'm saying? Somebody you know, little boy got mutilated you know what i'm saying and he was probably his parents was probably okay jakes or they was even in the truth that's when you that's the time when you fast you see what i'm saying 
So that's why. So let's get how long. Judges 20 and 26. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of the heavenly father and wept and sat there before the Lord Yahweh and fasted. You see that day e until even. So you can fast from whatever point to another point. So if you got up in the um, morning when it was daylight, when you woke up, you could just fast until even when the sun go down. So that's the time. That's that's how long, that's times of how long, right? I get a couple more. It says and offer burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord, right? And now we know that this is way way more powerful tool of use now because the Lord got rid of uh, the sacrificial uh, the sacrificing of the physical actual animals, right? Uh, let's get First Samuel. Let's go to where we just came from. 1 Samuel 31 and 13. It says, And they took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. So you could fast seven days. Now, I don't have to be straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, complete straight. You know, like I got one. The most, they say, uh, humans do. Because another perk of this is a, it's a health benefit. Because why do you think when you get sick, you don't want to eat? See, the Lord programmed that, man. Because it helps further along the process. It helps purges you. Purges the, the illness out of your body. See? So that's when you fast, it does it spiritually. Right? When you're not actually physically ill. You know? And that's another uh, why you would do it. Because you probably got sick. You probably getting sick. You know what I'm saying? But it's a sickness that to where... You can consciously fast. It's not one of those sick sicknesses when you just don't want to eat. It's one of those sicknesses you like, what the hell going on? Let me fast. You see what I'm saying? Let me beg the Lord to make this right. And uh, in all sincerity, sincerity, in the name of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah. And Lord willing, he make that, that come out for you. You know what I'm saying? Like that. This is Esther 4 and 16. Go gather all the Jews that are present in Shashan and fast ye for me. You see, that's another time when you can fast, when you need to fast for somebody else. You cut something going on with them. It says, and neither eat nor drink three day, three days, night or day. You see what I'm saying? So you got that's a specific on how long. Three days, and you wouldn't eat in it like completely. So that's and this this to prove that the seven days don't is not necessarily day and night. It's it's day, but it's it's it don't it's, it's not saying that it's um this is proof right here just how she worded it. it says and neither eat nor drink three days night or day because if i get up like right now the sun is going down right um or let's say tomorrow so or let's say tonight i can eat all night and then when the sun comes back up but like when i wake up I won't eat anything, put nothing to my mouth, anything, all the way until the sun goes down again. But in this instance, right, and then that would be a fast for a day, and then I'll do that for seven days. That's that instance. That's that seven days, right? No one's fasting for seven days. It's not reported besides your house right, which we'll get to. But in this instance, she's saying, don't, when you, for from, no, it's no break in between, which has been done. I've, I've no, I know brothers that have counted, uh, know of brothers that have counted themselves as fasting for three days. You see what I'm saying? Some brothers did too. You know what I'm saying? But I do mine. I've never did two or three straight without n nothing eating. That just wasn't put on my spirit to do. You see what I'm saying? I did, I do, uh, uh, Based off what this is a, is alluding to, what they probably did, right? In that uh, first, that first Samuel, um, thirteen and thirty, thirty, 30 that first Samuel thirty-one and thirteen, right? I do seven days, you know what I'm saying? But it's not like straight, like with no break. But I fast, I still count as fasting seven days. You see, 
So that's what this is saying. Nor three days, day, night, day, no, uh, and fast for me, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So she was trying not to get put to death. So she asked it, asked it, like how Jake be like, pray for me. Well, Jake ain't really spiritual. Because if you was really trying to have your prayers heard, you would inquire more, right? Because this is really how you get your prayers heard. Because when you're, this is a good time to bring it out. This is Isaiah 58. Isaiah in the 58th chapter. When you fast, you really have an advantage, man. This is Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, speak, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. You see, pray for me, bro, as a nation that did righteousness. <laughs> and for and forsook not the ordinance of their God, their power. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take a delight in approaching. They ask of me the ordinance, ordinances of justice. And they, they take delight in approaching to God. So Jake go to church. They be in front of Bible, stuff like that, right? So they approach, but they never deal with him. It says, wherefore have we fasted, say they. Some of them might actually know about fasting. Some churches do fast, right? Some The buildings, that is, because that's not a real church. It says, wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. You see? Because the Lord, so that tell you right there, if you don't fast right, the Lord don't have to actually still talk to you for whatever reason, but it's going to tell you. It's, so he says, wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. I fasted like you told me, bro. He ain't even, it says, wherefore have we fast, where ha, wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Further proving that's what. When you when you're fasting, you're humbling yourself, and and thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye found pleasure, and exact all your labor. So that's uh, uh, another way of of fat. That's that's the complete part of fasting. When you fast, you don't drink anything, and you don't have any pleasures on that day. You don't be playing music. You don't be all engaged and. Uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? You don't do all that. It's, 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 no, it's no pleasures. You know what I'm saying? It's no... You see? Because you're supposed to be mourning. Now, you can be outside in the wilderness, but it's not... You're, you, see, it's, could you be outside in the wilderness mournful? Really reflecting? Yes. I didn't say you're uh, at an amusement park outside. On the Ferris wheel and you fasting? No, that don't even make sense. You see that? So that's the, the things what Jake would do. You know what I'm saying? Jake go to the mall and shop, but fasting. While they fasting. That's something Jake could do. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite. Because you can fast. When you fast, you're making your request. And the Lord is going to answer it, man. You see? So it's whatever it is, man, Lord, you might want to learn the scriptures. You might want to be become stronger. You, that's your request. Whatever it is you need, uh, your memory, uh, dealing with brothers better, being better at home, having more wisdom. You see what I'm saying? Patience, fasting to get demons off of you. You see what I'm saying? But this says these will be Jake's purpose because the Lord knows before you even fast and while you fast and he knows where you at the hardest the hardest deceitful above all things and desperately desperately wicked who 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 can know it i the lord searched the heart i tried the reins you see he searched the heart to see where you at even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing so wherever you truly at your attitudes that's what how he's going to reward you man so that's why He's saying this. It says, behold, you fast for strife and debate, even if you don't tell nobody that, you know, but he, he know that's why you really want to be able to do it. You want to learn the scriptures just to debate, you know what I'm saying? Just to just for strife, you know, 
And that's contentions. You see, con controversy. That's it. To go do what uh, uh, the Pharisees was doing, Yahweh Shah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm sick of these niggas. I'm about to, man, let me get, let me do this fast. You know what I'm saying? It says, and to, and to smite with the fist of wickedness, ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. When you fast, you are t your voice is heard on high, man. You see what I'm saying? So that's the advantage you have. You know, so that's why. Uh, that's that that's that's my point on that. You know, but how long? We we just going into the how long? You got you know what I'm saying three days straight. You know what I'm saying, and and and, and it's and it's that, and she's like, and it's I, I got more more than just myself fasting for the situation. The nation needs to probably fast or something like that, or more people I know that's in the truth probably need to fast for this situation. To come out right. You know what I'm saying? She like, if I perish, I perish. That's just what it is. But we know that's how we actually approach to the Lord and actually get him to hear us. He hear you. A prayer does not compare to someone's fasting that's ask, making their request. Because your prayer is just a request. But when you fast and make a request, your voice is caused to be heard on high. It's like you're right in front of the throne. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like you're one of the elders. That sits around the throne. See what I'm saying? So it's heavy, man. And then you got, don't try to do this. Don't be over-righteous. And do more than you can do. So I said, I never did three days straight. I just want to put on my spirit to do it. You know, Matthew 4 and 4, it says, Salakia. Matthew 4 and 1. Then Yahweh led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. See, he was out, outside. But he was he in an amusement park type of spirit? No. And when listen, and when he had when he had fasted, see, he was fasting and was still out and about. You see? But it just depends on if you're truly in the house of mourning. Don't go fast and go shopping for clothes, man. You see what I'm saying? Unless you have to. You know, it's just because just that's how the situation played out. But that shouldn't be, you know, you want to avoid that. You want to really be locked in to what you're doing. And if you do happen to be out with somebody, you got to go fat, uh, shopping with them or something. Don't engage, man. Don't engage. Don't engage. Just be there. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. You know what I'm saying? You might be with the... Uh, uh, Man, right need to go get your kid something. Moms don't know you fasted because you don't tell nobody you fasted. And you gotta uh you gotta go take them to do it, go do it or something like that. You see what I'm saying? And you there. But you didn't plan to do that. So you that's why you can't be over righteous. It says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, another how long? After he was afterward a hunger. Don't try to do what your how shot did. You see, and they tell you if you're going to read this chapter, this will give you more perks because and when the tempter came to him, Satan himself, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, you see, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So he uh, resisted the devil uh, completely. Because he was endued with a new life, with a new spirit, with strength. This Satan in his ear. So ultimately when Satan offered him everything, this is what he ended up telling him. Right? Because he was so built up in the spirit after his fast and his request. Because he knew to walk the journey that he was sent to do. So that's why he did. He he was he was in he was set up to do forty days and forty nights. He was he just was able because he's that's it was Yahweh Shah man. It says Matthew four and ten. Then saith he then saith Yahweh Shah unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So he like, why would I serve you? And because he because he he tried to catch you. Satan plays with your mind, man. So that's how you this see this this chapter shows you that your spirit is in your mind because he was fasting and in that same time his flesh was weak. You see what I'm saying? So he tried to catch him when he was vulnerable. 
But since he was so in the spirit in his fast, since he didn't exact none of his labors in his fast, he kept his fast pure. His spirit, he went from probably benching one plate to 10 plates at the end of his fast by the time Satan caught up with him and tried to play on his mind. So he was his spirit was swole on swole, man. He said, get these hints, Satan. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it is, man. Esau offered you the chip. Parents in your ear with some crap. Family members or whoever, your, your, your boss. Talking about take this vaccine. You're going to be like, get these hints, man. You gotta get the hell out of here with that. Because you, your, your mind is, 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 is solid. See, your mind is, is, has been made hard. Because when you're fasting, it's a, it's a, a lasting, it's a, a duration of time. It's long lasting. You're making, you're building your spirit to become long lasting, meaning you're making yourself hard. You, you're making your mind solid. You're making your mind sound, which it tells us right here. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, you see, and of love, and of a sound mind, you see. Your spirit and your mind is simultaneously. Your spirit controls your mind, man. When you got demons in your head, they playing on your spirit because your spirit is weak, you know? Or they trying to see if your spirit is weak. Poking it like tissue. Your, when, you, when you lift weights for a certain amount of time, you notice your muscles get real hard, man. It go, from you, it go from you just being big, like your muscles get real hard. That's when you know you it's iron, man. That's when you know you really in it, you know? You really put that work in. That's, that's like unto your spirit, your mind. So that's pretty much it. What I want to do is get this now, Matthew 6. I'll come in possibly later and do a part two to this. You know, Matthew 6. And we're going to start at. That's going into prayer. Said, uh, let's see. Matthew 6 and 16, it says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites. You know, that's when, when you talk it, but don't walk it, man. It says, Be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. So you shouldn't be trying to appear like you just, man, I'm just so in the spirit, man. Yeah, I'm fasting, brother. Yeah, you know, you don't do that. It says, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see, that there, there it is. Oh, man, brother, you fasting, man. Great for you. Another, you see the blind, the blind leading the blind, man. You know, tissue. Tissue smashing against tissue because that ain't iron 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 sharpening uh, sharpening iron, you know. But thou and thou fastest, right? You brothers and sisters out there, children as, as well. But thou and thou fastest, anoint thine thine head and wash thy face. You clean yourself up when you before you you go into your fast, man, to where no one would know that thou appear not unto man to fast. Like I said you get you some coconut oil. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be too obvious because we know the routine. But if you take care of yourself on a daily, would nobody know? It says, you know, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. And thy Father, because you can't see the Lord. You see what I'm saying? So none of the things he deal with, you truly can see. You see what I'm saying? Like the Spirit. When you're in the Spirit, you can't see him because he's a Spirit. Unless he wants to manifest himself. Then he's a so-called black man as the as the... Negro, right? So called as as the elder Tahar, you know what 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 uh phrase it, you know. But anyway, it says, and thy father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. You see that? So that's just the process of how you fast, why, what is the perks? You get an advantage. Your voice is heard on on on, on uh high. You like you put yourself at the front of requests. So you got people sending up prayers all day. A lot of that stuff don't even make it through, but you know what I'm saying? Because people, uh, uh, the scriptures tell you, him that he that turns his his ear from hearing the words of the Lord, even his prayer is abomination, man. You know what I'm saying? Paraphrasing. So a lot of people pray all day 
and then they don't even know to who. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much that, man. You got the perks, you get the advantage. You're, 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 and you're, you're, you know what it is. You can go back, rewind the video, watch it again, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So Lord willing, this has been edifying, man. Uh, I don't think I left nothing out. And uh, don't be over righteous, man. Do not be over righteous. Let me get this. This is uh, Ecclesiastes seven and eleven. Matter of fact, seven and sixteen. Be not righteous over over much. You see, it ain't say be don't be righteous. It say don't be righteous over much. Don't have a false balance. Don't try to play yourself. Be not righteous over much. Neither make thyself overwise. Don't try to overdo just something what the what the Lord say to do. Man, he said fast, so I'm going to try to fast the whole year. That's being overwise. Because wise is when you do what he say, right? When you apply the knowledge, you know. Oh, man, I can get the Lord to hear me. So you know what? I'm going to try to get him to hear me all this month. So I'm going to just fast this whole month. And then that's probably going to roll over to the next. You're going to be dead before you can receive the benefits, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a, uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 11, 7 and 16. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself overwise. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? You see what I'm saying? Be not over wicked. Be not wicked. Be not over much wicked. Neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? So when you know you went off, you need to fast, your flesh is getting weak. You about to go back into the world. You thinking about you sh it shouldn't even come across your mother. Satan play like that, man. You go go hit a lick. I'ma just steal this one last thing or something like that. You need to fast, man. You see what I'm saying? You need to go on a fast, bro. I'm finna quit listening. Cause moms don't, I'm just gonna trust me. You know what I'm saying? I don't even it's I'm seeing too many errors and uh, no, nah, bro, you need to fast. Cause when you fast, you're asking for superior guidance for the purest outcome for yourself. So Lord willing, this has been edifying. Don't try to fast more than you can, man. Just take it a little bit at a time and you just understand the Lord wants us to do this because this is truly talking to him and this is humbling yourself, right? He wants us humble because he's about to exalt everything that's lowly right now. And he's about to bring down everything that's high, you see? So don't get too high up, don't get too low to, to where on both sides you can destroy yourself, all right? Shalom.